A reward on the road. Huh? What's this? Wait. This looks like the star I found earlier. I told the guards to place it near the goddess statue. Maybe they ran into some trouble up there. Guess we'd better hurry. on the road. Urine for a little shot. Go, go, Barry! Come a little closer. Shadows of fate. Urine for a little shock. Come a little closer. <laughs> Closer. Is this an answer from this world? for a little shock.
stabbed him to death. <laughs> You're in for a little shot. Windblade. A reward on the road. Feels like they really didn't want to give that to us. Your Majesty, this conservative radical, he attacked us. He threw the star from the Astral Garden and even stole the magic thread linking the Oracle Pillars. But just as we were about to arrest him, the Goddess's magic activated, and now we can't move. No! Nobody touched the Celestial Gear! What's an Oracle Pillar? You need to use it to pray to the Goddess. I'll explain later. First, let's help these guys. But, your majesty! Even if we catch up to him now, we won't be able to change his mind, much less quell the fear that many others like him are feeling. All it would do is turn him further against us. Understood, your majesty. Also, this is the magic thread he was holding from the Oracle Pillars. Your majesty, what should we... Ah! Please give that to the Traveler over there. I believe they have some questions for the Goddess. Yes, Your Majesty. Um, so, what do we do with this exactly? See those Oracle Pillars over there? Just use the magic thread to connect them together in a specific pattern, and the Goddess of Prophecy will answer your prayers. Oh! Sounds easy enough. Let's give it a try.
To which course of fate do you seek answers, my child of Simulanka? Go and push the gear that connects up to the starry sky. When that time comes, I shall dance and return the tracks beneath my people's feet back to the stars in the sky. The hero from another world, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to this world. So, Miss Navia was right. The Goddess of Prophecy didn't tell us anything about the future. Fair enough. Guess we'll just have to play it by ear! Then first, we have to restore the sky back to its original state, by putting the stars back in their positions. Let me do a quick count. All right. Adding in the ones we picked up on the way here, I think that's all of them. Let's go hang these stars back up in the sky. In the sky? Uh, how do we get up there? Oh, <laughs> I got us covered. We will, of course, be taking... The Aerial Express. Is that a flying train? Hey, you already took a train that runs on water. Is a flying train really that much weirder? Well, at least the Maritime Express still runs on a track. Oh, come on. Don't worry about it. This train has been blessed by the Goddess of Prophecy. Its whole purpose is to protect the Metropole skies. It took me a lot of effort to find it, you know. I don't think anyone's used it in, like, mm, a hundred years. A hundred years? Are you sure it's safe? Let's not forget that the Goddess of Prophecy's magic has been going haywire recently! Well, it's not like we have any other options. Unless you want to do the honors, Paimon. Fancy flying up there on your own? <laughs> no, thank you. It's way too high up. Oh, wait, Milu! You've got a feel for how magic works here. Can you do your thing and sense if this train is a real deal? I can try. Hmm. Yes, I can sense traces of magic, but it's different from the kind I felt in the forest, so... I don't know. Okay, fine. Guess there's only one way to find out. That's the spirit. I'll come with you. Miss Nilu, will you be joining us? I think I'll stay behind. That way, if something does go wrong, you'll have someone on the ground to get you some help. That makes sense. If the train does break down, you can make us a giant origami crane to come bail us out. Or if a crane's too difficult, a finch could work. <laughs> before. So high up. Don't 
double down, double down. Oh, <laughs> hang in there, Paimon. The hard part's nearly over. After that, it's downhill all the way. Don't say downhill all the way! That is the last thing Paimon wants to hear! It all went smoothly. Yeah, and it was an absolute blast, too. You gotta ride with us next time, Miss Nilu. Huh? Uh, I'm okay. Uh, thanks for. Halt! What do you think you're doing? Get out of my way! What's going on? Your Majesty, there! Let us through! Stay back! It's okay. Let them through. Tuh. Y your Majesty, could we please ask you not to turn the gear that connects up to the sky? And why is that? As you have seen, the goddess's gift is very important to us. It keeps us from harm and protects our very lives. Some of us, we just aren't ready to lose that protection. I see. I understand. Huh? Your Majesty, do you mean... I won't turn that gear. Not until you're ready. What? I've said before that the Metropole belongs to the people, and they should have the right to decide its future. <sighs> but let me ask you this. How do you plan to solve the issues we are currently facing? Well, we'll start by rescuing the people that have gotten stuck, and then we'll find a way to figure out the true cause of this crisis. And have you made any headway on that? The true cause, I mean. Unfortunately, not. Hey, you little... I'm sorry, my friend, but it's the truth. You have friends and family that have been affected, don't you? That have gotten stuck? Duh! I understand your concerns. But if we let this drag on for much longer, the situation may well get worse. More and more people will be frozen by the goddess's magic. Yes, but if we turn that gear now, all the tracks in this city will disappear. I know this is a hard decision to make, but have you ever thought about why the goddess might have made things this way in the first place? Huh? Why do you think she might decide to take back her gift and stop revealing further prophecies about the future? Are you saying she has abandoned us? No. Quite the opposite, in fact. What do you mean? The goddess dearly loves this world and all the people of Simulanka. And because she loves you so much, she wants you to be able to choose your own path. <sighs> Every parent hopes their child will have a happy and carefree life. But if they're overprotective, then all they'll manage to do is keep their child trapped. If a mother bird lets her baby ride on her wings for too long, her child will never learn how to fly. Perhaps the goddess of prophecy has always known that one day, she'll have to let go. Children can only become independent if they're allowed to form their own opinions, make their own decisions, and deal with the consequences on their own. Only then will they be able to continue their journey alone, even after their parents are gone. But we've relied on the Goddess's protection for so long, we don't know what it's like to go it alone. We don't know if we have what it takes. Are you kidding me? I think you've proven yourselves more than capable of that. 
What do you mean? You made a call in a time of crisis. And you've come all this way to talk to me. Even the guards couldn't stop you. That must have taken a lot of courage. But we only did it because we were scared. Why you set out on the journey doesn't matter. What matters is that you've proven you can choose your own path. <sighs> My friend, I fear our king is right. It is time for us to face our fears. What? But... but we... We can't go on living like this. Living in fear. Look at what it's driven you to do. You threw away a star personally created by the goddess of prophecy herself. <laughs> you once revered her more than any of us. And I think the king is right. She hasn't abandoned us. So... Why don't we put our trust in her one more time? <sighs> I don't care anymore. Do what you want. Aw, he laughed. I'm sorry about my friend. That's just how he is. Always had a terrible temper. Please accept my apology for his impudent behavior. Is it just me, or... Has he accepted the goddess's prophecy? I think so. Not that you'll ever hear him admit it out loud. Your Majesty, please turn the gear that connects up to the sky. So, you've made up your mind? About giving up the goddess's gift? Yes, I've made up my mind. But maybe losing the gift isn't what this is about anymore. Because we've gained something, too. You have given us courage. <laughs> well said. I am proud of your decision. Now, gather around, everyone, and join me as we make the night sky of this wonderful city turn once more. The stars hanging in the sky, they're music notes! This entire metropole is a huge music box! That's incredible! <sighs> How do you feel? Uh, a little scared and uncertain. But for some reason, I feel a lot more at ease. It's as if some kind of huge weight has been lifted from my shoulders. Figured out any next steps? To be honest, not really. But maybe I can start by having a heart-to-heart -heart with that stubborn friend of mine. I have an idea. If you don't know what to do, why don't you start by helping the people around you? You mean, the people who got stuck because of the goddess's magic? I mean, anyone and everyone who needs your help. By helping others? You'll eventually find your own path. Trust me, I have experience in this. What kind of experience, Your Majesty? Hmm... Ah, uh, yes. We'll need a formal organization with a catchy name before we go out and start helping people. Why don't we call it... The Spina di Rosula? Spina... di Rosula? Ooh, or even... The Spina di Rosula... Dissimulanka. Yeah, that's catchy. Wow, big expansion for the Spina. Moving into other worlds now. Spina di Rosula. <laughs> I like it. It's a great name. Let's do as your majesty suggests. Well then, how about I appoint you as the head of the Spina in Simulanka? 
While I'm off fighting the dragon with the other heroes, it'll be your responsibility to work with the guards and take good care of the people in the Metropole. What? You're planning on fighting the dragon? But no, Your Majesty, you must reconsider! He's right. Your Majesty, you can't. How are you two on the same side all of a sudden? Perhaps Your Majesty is unaware of this. The Great Dragon suddenly broke out from the Titanium Mines one day and tore the end of the world to pieces. After that, it spat out a strange fog that surrounded a whole island. No one knows what lies beyond the fog, and no one knows what has become of that poor island. Before Your Majesty arrived, we dispatched many soldiers to fight the dragon, but none came back alive. Yikes. Sounds worse than we thought. Isn't that all the more reason for us to go? There could still be guards trapped there, waiting for someone to rescue them. King Navia is right. We cannot simply stand by and watch as the people of this world suffer. <sighs> very well. Though I have not served by your side for very long, Your Majesty. Two days is enough for me to have learned that once your mind is set, any attempts to change it are futile. <laughs> You're a pretty good judge of character. Um, he probably didn't mean that as a compliment. Since you're serious about this, I won't try and stop you. There's only one way to reach the end of the world, and that's by taking the Maritime Express. Oh, right! So there's a line going there too? Yes. It was originally built to serve the workers commuting to the Titanium Mines, but it has been abandoned since the Dragon Attack. I'll tell the conductor to wait for you at the platform by the side gate to the Metropole first thing tomorrow morning. You're embarking on an extremely dangerous adventure. Please be careful, your majesty and friends. Oh, thank you for your concern. While I'm gone, I leave the Metropole in your capable hands. Yes, yes your, your majesty! majesty. <laughs> Just call me boss from now on. That's what everyone in the Spina calls me, and it's what I'm used to. The plan for tomorrow is journey across the ocean, make it to the end of the world, and defeat a dragon. Ooh, that's an adventure and a half. Do all storybook heroes have to work this hard? At least we'll get to see some amazing scenery along the way, right? Besides, we'll have each other. It'll be a shared experience that we'll never forget. Plus, we're pretty well equipped for a classic Heroes vs. Dragon story. We got Miss Nilu as our magic caster, and I... I guess I'm the melee warrior who leads the charge? Paimon can definitely see that. Anyway, those are tomorrow's problems. Right now, all Paimon wants is to eat a proper meal, because worst case scenario, if Paimon ends up getting eaten by a dragon, she wants to do it on a full stomach. And something about the end of the world doesn't sound like a great place for food options. Hmm. Well, the origami animals in the forest only drink magic tonic. What do the toy people here in Constellation Metropole eat? Vegetable oil and sawdust, I think. 